Hello everyone, uh, this is Jake, Kilo Kilo 6 Lima in Pennsylvania and I just want to go over and do a quick overview of a project that I just finished. Well, let's call it 95% finished. Uh, I just got the last part in the mail today. Um, this is a ham radio go box. This is an HF and VHF station uh, in a portable format that you can take anywhere and use in a field day setting or a portable operation or something like that. Uh, I'll go over the basic um, uh, elements of it and show you what I've done. This is actually version 1. Uh, I've already moved on to version 2 and I'm working on version 3. So um, this, this shows you kind of what you can do. Uh, the, the later versions I'll show in some videos later talking about um, miniaturization and sort of specialization uh, the different uh, packages that I'm working on. So. Uh, with that, we'll go ahead and show you uh, GoBox uh, version 1 and show you what I've done with this. So, Alright, so the first thing I want to show you is the sort of outlay of the box um, and uh, give you an idea for exactly what's included here. Uh, the basic structure of the box is a Gator G Pro um, 6U rack mount box. It's just a case. It's a polyethylene sort of case. Um, that uh, I bought this one at Guitar Center, but uh, it, it's sort of a rugged 19 inch rack mount. And uh, when I say six unit, I mean the standard rack unit is 1.75 inches, so this is one unit, and then you go two units, three units, four units, five units, six units. And what I've done with this case is I've installed a 16 inch uh, vented um, shelf a 12 inch vented shelf and this is something that I see um, in some other installations but I don't see in a lot of go boxes which is a, a pull out drawer and in my case I have installed uh, a laptop in this drawer so this is a this is a, an addition that I don't see in a lot of the other go boxes but this laptop is installed in here and it's intended to control N1MM and any other software that you could have for all digital modes and we'll get back to this in a little bit but uh, the gist of it is it's it's wired in here this is powered and all the auto connections and everything are hooked up uh, and go to my radio control uh, unit which I'll show you in a little bit but uh, anyway so that's a lockable drawer um, key here. Here's my DX engineering sticker. Uh, first shelf, I've installed an MFJ 939i. This is an IntelliTuner. You can see it's not as tall as the rack. Fits in there nicely. Next element here is an external speaker. And then of course we have the power supply. This is a 30 amp power supply by PowerWorks. Uh, nothing fancy, it's just the basic model. Uh, on the second shelf, I have installed an MFJ uh, average uh, SWR watt meter. And of course we have um, the ICOM 706 Mark II G. Uh, the other thing I've, I've seen a lot, I probably wouldn't use again, uh, just to save space, is this uh, gooseneck uh, LED lamp. Um, they're, they're pretty slick. Uh, it's neat to have in this particular installation because what I can do is I can pull my, pull my lamps out, put them where I need them to go, uh, turn them on, you know, do all sorts of things in the dark. Uh, let me turn the power on so that you can see what I'm doing here. But uh, so, you know, we've got the LED lights. You can turn these on, direct them where you want them. This one's pointed down, the other one's pointed up. Uh, just gives a little bit of, of functionality there. Uh, I have this system powered currently on the DC power supply, and as you can see, all that lights up. Now what I've done here with the ICOM 706 Mark II G is I've remoted the head just because I found it's kind of cramped in there, especially with the uh, um, mic adapters and digital mode cables and whatnot. So I've remoted the head down to a little thing that I've built. Uh, this is basically just a gate hinge um, and some hardware and I've done that so that I can get the uh, radio head out of the way a little bit. And of course this turns on here. So here's your 706 Mark II. So it's remoted and I did this so that I could get out of the way of the computer because in this installation um, the computer covers up most things. I and mean, it's no big deal when you have the auto tuner and whatnot but when you're going to do the laptop and you open it up um, 
you know, you've got your lamps and whatnot. Uh, the computer takes up most of the box, so you really can't get to anything. So I felt that putting the uh, putting the head over there was handy. Now, uh, something else that I have here, I have an N1MM pulled up. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, this actually controls the radio. I'm going to go ahead and I'll just push the buttons on the computer and you can see how this controls the radio. So, you know, I can change frequencies in here. Uh, I can change modes. Uh, you know, I can do all sorts of things from the radio. And of course, for contesting, uh, I can do my Morse code. So, you know, that works there. Uh, that was the uh, that was the tuner trying to kick in in the background, but uh, suffice it to say, you know, it works. So that's remoted. Now, one of the problems that I have had, I wanted to show you this. Let me put my little gooseneck back here so that you can see in. Uh, the red box back there is a rig blaster plug and play. That's what I'm using for this installation. Um, it works well, but the inputs for the radio only accept Morse code or RIDI. So what I've done is I've wired up this three pole uh, double throw switch. And if I want to do ready, I switch down. If I want to do Morse code in N1MM, I switch up. So uh, that's pretty much what I have here in the front. Uh, it, it, it looks simple, but I'll tell you it was really complicated to put together. So I'm going to close this all back up. And we're going to flip the thing around and we're going to take a look at the back. I'll lock up my drawer, turn off the radio and put the lights away. So, uh, hope that gives you a good idea of, of what we've got going on here. This is the front of the go box and we'll get to the back of the go box. I wanted to show you one more thing before we switch to the back. Um, basically, folks have asked about this uh, hole here. This hole is actually designed to accept a, a Ray Solutions AS4192. It's the bandpass filter uh, set to the, the, the second version, version 2. And what I've done here is I've wired up power and I actually have a, a, a cable in the back here, you can't really see it, but that that's the junction for the coax from the radio and the tuners. So I can put a, a bandpass filter here uh, or any combination of different bandpass filters uh, and run that on a field day uh, setting so that I'm not getting interference from other stations. So this isn't just designed to be portable, it's also designed to be you know, fairly RF immune. Uh, and I'll get to that next. Also, um, in the meantime, and I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with this yet. Again, this is version 1, so I've already moved on to a different design. But uh, if you don't have the bandpass filters here, this can continue to act as storage uh, for the extra components. This actually stands up inside and scoots over right there and then this accessories bag can fit in right there. So uh, yeah, that's one of the handy things about this leaving it the way it is. Maybe only installing one bandpass filter for maybe 20 meters or, or 20 meters and 80 meters uh, just for a contest setting. So that's the scoop. Okay. This is what I consider to be the really interesting part of this whole installation. And again, this is just a basic overview of this system. I'm not going to get into the guts of it right now just because I'm tired and I don't want to take it apart. But uh, this is the back of the rack. I'll go over the elements real quick. Uh, the first one is just a Furman um, M8X square. This is a power conditioner. I did this in case there's some dirty power from a generator or something. Uh, whatever AC power that I'm using to power everything in the meantime um, you know will be filtered and not have a lot of the spikes and whatnot from from dirty power uh, second thing we have here and I'll turn that on a little bit is a pro cool um, you can find these on eBay pro cool LED LED four fan 80 millimeter two unit panel and that's for extra cooling and that actually goes along with a fan mod that I have on the icom itself so the goal is to keep this thing cool so that you can run a little bit higher power. Second part is a custom made, and I designed and made this myself, a custom made uh, accessories panel. Uh, and I'll explain this in a little bit. You can see basically I have AC power coming in here with a heavy duty cord. 
I have three uh, coax connectors. Only these two are used with this installation. Uh, the third is just for an expansion in the future, but basically you have VHF and UHF, and then the third is just blank. Uh, on the back side of this is actually a relay. This relay is used in the second part of this system. Uh, basically, you know, who wants to run something if they can't do it off of, uh, you know, backup power in an emergency situation? So I have designed this to accept 13 volt DC power into a double plug here. And what happens is when you plug in power and turn this on, this meter will read what the voltage is on that DC power and then it will give you the option to switch it on and off. So you plug it in, you read if you have a good voltage, and then if you decide you want to do this, you flip the switch. And then the switch flips the relay, cuts off the AC power source, which comes through that PowerWorks power supply, and runs only on whatever comes through here. So I designed that circuit myself, and there's a uh, Potter and Brumfeld uh, uh, DC power relay on the back of this. Uh, and I could be happy to give people details on that if they're interested. Uh, next part is we have a heavy duty ground. This is an 8 gauge ground bus inside the system. Goes to a grounding bar uh, and ties into every bit of equipment in the rack. And then of course the next part is we just have a 2U blanking panel that covers up cables and whatnot. And I've adorned it with some various interesting things. You know, my DX engineering plug, my Iceland sticker, my Australian sticker, my California sticker. Uh, why do you have a California sticker, you ask? Well, I'm from California most recently. I'm in Pennsylvania because that's where my wife's from, but uh, I was born and raised in Arizona, California, and my call sign's KK6 Lima, so that gives you a hint. Australia because I like Australia, and Iceland because I like Iceland. You know, so found some cool stickers to juice the box up a bit and make it look cool. Now let's look at the uh, fan panel. This is one of the cool parts of this. I'm not sure I'd use these again. Uh, they're a little bit pricey for what you get. Uh, and quite honestly, the next design I'm going to have is only going to use two of these. So I, I need this extra space, and they don't make custom panels. So I've designed my own that uses two LED panels, and we'll, we'll get to that in a future video. But this is cool for now, and this is good for this installation. And I'll go ahead and turn this on. Uh, all right, so this is one of the cool aspects. This gives you some cool light. Uh, four 80-millimeter fans. Uh, and I'll just be quiet for a minute. You can hear this up close. It's not that loud. So, anyway, that's the back of the box. Looks cool. Runs cool. Uh, there's a new design, and we can get into that to another video. But So, anyway, that's it. Uh, I'd be happy to go into some more detail. This is just a review. Uh, I plan to do a full series with the next box uh, and, and give you design instructions and, and how I came about with that. So, uh, If you have any questions, let me know. Uh, yes, I did change shirts in between takes. Uh, this took a while. So, Anyway, let me know if you have any questions. Put them down below. I'd be happy to answer.